Okay. For uh, for 4.4, let's say uh, we have an air at 20 degrees Celsius and one ATM flows past a smooth plate, uh, smooth plate as a figure here, a pitot static uh, tube placed two millimeters from the wall. So this is the wall and it placed two millimeters from the wall, develop a water manometer head of 21 millimeters. So I hope you could uh, understand how manometers work and use this uh, information with the Blasio solution uh, shown in table 4.1 to estimate the position X of the pitot tube. Check to see if the flow is laminar or turbulent. So uh, we estimate at 20 degrees Celsius and 1 atm, the rho, the density of the air is 1.205 kilogram per meter cube and the dynamic viscosity is 1.81 times 10 by the power of minus 5 kilogram per meter second. So and then uh, first we need to estimate what is the velocity at y equal to millimeters here. So uh, here uh, what you need to understand actually uh, for uh, make sure the YouTube manometer work uh, can be used for uh, measurement uh, to, to measure the pressure. So we uh, fill the YouTube manometer here with certain liquid. So we call it as a fluid gauge. And then after the air from uh, here, nozzle here comes into this tube. So it will push uh, this liquid and then it will give a, a different of height here as H. So here. Okay, so I hope you, you uh, understand this uh, situation. Okay, so first what you need to do is you need to develop the uh, Bernoulli equation. So for this one, so the point 0.1 and point 0.2 here is actually reflect. Uh, point 0.1 is somewhere up here and point 0.2 is actually at this nozzle. Okay. So and then we could say that so because uh, we are calculating as gauge pressure, okay, so gauge pressure, so we assume that P uh, ATM is equal to zero. So this is uh, to, uh, the, the uh, simple calculation. So means that the P1 here is equal to zero. And then we could assume that the level, the Z1 and also Z2 is equal to is uh, equal to zero because we assume that the uh, level of Z1 and Z2 is equal. Okay, so if you say uh, it means it could cancel each other. So and then you need to understand that the velocity of V2 here can be assumed as zero. So it is why, okay, I hope you, you could understand that we have a flow here goes into this uh, boundary layer, create the boundary layer, and then the air will flow into this tube, and then it will fill the tube. And then when it fill here, so in steady state, means after a certain time when the situation is steady, it's not changed anymore. So the velocity at point two here will become stagnation, velocity and uh, stagnation condition so stagnation condition means the velocity is equal to zero okay that's why we put uh, uh we we could assume that velocity here is equal to zero okay so here actually so actually you have two methods to calculate the pressure first you are you may use this equation so now if uh, if you use this equation so we have v1 square over 2g so it's equal now to p2 over rho g because the velocity is equal to zero and the z is equal to zero so here means that the energy the kinetic energy from the outside from the wind uh, from the airflow will be converted into a pressure so if you calculate okay this is the first method so and then the second method you could uh, uh, use is by reading or uh, by doing calculation with this YouTube uh, manometer. Okay, so in this situation, because we could calculate uh, both, so I prefer to use the uh, YouTube manometer because actually if you 
do a, a precise calculation, you will find that the Bernoulli equation here is actually need to plus with losses. Oh, here in some textbook they will call call as uh, losses, energy losses, or the resistance that that occur along the uh, flow. Okay, that's why uh, the boundary layers occur. So means in this situation, okay, uh, you need to calculate according to the to this uh, uh, YouTube manometer. So and then uh, to calculate this one, I think you already know everything uh, how to calculate the pressure here. So means because we are dealing with uh, air, so means that the air will come here and then the air will push this surface until the level will become like this one. So it has the different of 0 0.021 meter. So what you need to understand is here the pr the pressure okay because uh, we are dealing with air so we assume that the pressure at this point is actually equal at pressure at this point so this is the pressure is equal why because the medium is air so air will distribute uh, pressure evenly so means that uh, as I said previously, the, the air will come here. So, and then it fill this tube. So means that the pressure inside this tube created by the air is now equal, it's, uh, it, it is constant. So we assume that pressure that occur here is equal to the pressure that occur at this point. Okay, so, and then we could uh, calculate, for example, Okay, so for example, we assume that uh, this is 0.1, uh, this is 0.2, okay, this is 0.3, okay. So we assume that P2 is now equal to P3, and then according to the uh, Pascal paradox, so I hope you could, uh, uh, you, you already know about this, how to calculate the YouTube manometer. So, uh, Pressure at point three here is now equal to the pressure at here at point four because uh, it's uh, stay in same level. So P three is equal to P four, but this P four is actually it has another portion of liquid on it on on the top of itself. So means that uh, the the pressure at P four is actually equal to the uh, rho GH and then plus the atmospheric pressure that push the uh, liquid surface. So rho GH plus ATM. So uh, because we assume that ATM is equal to zero, so we could neglect this value. So now we could say that P2 is actually equal to rho G and H according to this manometer tube. So, and then, okay, and then if we calculate the uh, uh, value of rho gh, so we have the rho gh here. So, and then please be careful because you need, we have two density here, the density of air and the density of uh, liquid inside the YouTube manometer. So, in this case, because the height here is created by the liquid, so we need to use the density of the liquid. So, let's say we have the liquid. Uh, according to the question here, so we have the uh, water manometer. So means we need to uh, calculate uh, use the the density uh, by using the density of water. So we have uh, rho for water, gravity, and the height of the water level. So we could calculate the pressure at point two is two hundred and five pascal. Okay, so that the first uh, calculation, and then the next step is. Okay, we go back to here and then we need to imagine something like this. Okay, as we know that uh, velocity in, in boundary layer, we will have velocity distribution like this one. Okay, so means that the velocity at this wall is equal to zero because it has no slip condition. And then the velocity will increase a little bit until it reach the velocity same with the free stream velocity here. So which is... 20 millimeter per uh, 20 meter per second. So means that 
Previously, in our Bernoulli equation, we assumed that velocity at here is equal to zero. So why we equal this one? Because we put YouTube manometer and the situation change into the stagnation condition. So stagnation means all the energy, all the kinetic energy, all the kinetic energy which uh, create certain velocity at here is 100% converted into pressure. Now, if we take out this YouTube manometer, if we, un if we uninstall the YouTube manometer, the, we have velocity at this point. So it means that velocity here is uh, exist, not equal to zero. Now we need to estimate the what is the velocity at this point. So this estimation is actually can be done again by using the uh, Bernoulli equation. So what we could assume is, okay, so this is the Bernoulli equation without the YouTube manometer. So means that for sure the level is, uh, we assume that uh, the level is equal to, uh, is equal. So we could cancel the value of Z. So, and then because the situation is open to atmospheric pressure, so we assume that, uh, okay, so, oh, okay, I, I'm sorry, not, not this one. <laughs> okay, I, 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 made, uh, I made mistake. Okay, so previously, we calculated at point two here, Okay, at point two here, the velocity, uh, the pressure is 205 Pascal. So means that, okay, means that if we put, so if we put YouTube manometer here, the pressure is 205 Pascal. So means that if we uninstall the YouTube manometer here, so means the energy of 205 Pascal will be converted into kinetic energy. So we could uh, make a calculation is, so we say that pressure head, okay, pressure head, okay, will be converted into the kinetic head. So we used uh, the uh, Bernoulli equation. So pressure head is actually P over rho G, so it will be equal to the V square over 2G. So we substitute the pressure here, which is the uh, 205 Pascal. Okay. So, and then we have the rho G here, and then we could calculate the velocity of V square. Okay. So, and then you will get the value of 18.85 meter per second. Okay, so means that we assume that uh, the velocity at this location, okay, at this location is equal to 18 point, 18.45 meter per second. Okay, now what uh, we could do is we could create our uh, uh, velocity distribution. So here we assume that Okay, uh, without the YouTube manometer here, the U here, okay, I hope you uh, understand, the small U is actually the, the local velocity. So I mean the velocity at this location is 18.4 meter per second. And then the free stream velocity here, so it is equal 20 meter per second. And this 20 meter per second is a symbol uh, it uh, illustrated as capital U. So if you uh, still remember when we uh, do the uh, velocity at uh, the boundary layer, the basic uh, calculation of boundary layer, we will use the idea of U over K, U over U, whether it is equal Y over delta and so on and so forth. So the U over U here is the ratio between the local velocity and the free stream velocity. So here in this situation, we have local velocity of 18.45 and we have the free stream velocity of 20 meter per second. So what we do is we could have our velocity distribution, the ratio. So we have the U over U here as 0 0.9225. So if you have 18.45 divided by 20, so you will have around 0 0.9225. So, and then how uh, we could estimate the X is 
we go to the Blasius calculation. So because it is, uh, we could assume it is a lamina one. Okay, first we try to uh, check with the Blasius and then we have this table. So you could get this table from the textbook and uh, the basic idea of so, uh, Blasius solution is being uh, explained previously. So what you need to do is we need to get the location where the this ratio occur so it is 0 0.9225 and it is the value of u over u u over capital u and from this table we found that f prime here is actually equal to u over capital u so uh, we see in this column so until we could get the value of 0 0.9 2 to 5, so it is between this number. Okay, so here it is okay for you not to find 0 0.99 or 99% because the question is to find the estimation for that certain location. So 99% is to calculate the boundary layer thickness. Okay, please. Uh, uh, understand the question so and then uh, we need to do the interpolation so uh, we could get that it is uh, between 0 0.901 and 0 0.93 so and then we uh, do the linear interpolation and then we could get the eta here is equal 2.5451 so and then uh, if you refer the textbook we could see that the blushes is a solution okay it's a uh, uh, the, the the value of eta is equal to y square root u rho u over 2 mu x. In certain textbook, they will write y square root u over 2, 2 nu and x. Okay, please uh, be careful because the nu here is the kinematic viscosity and it is equal to mu over rho. Okay, so this is uh, the equation that use the dynamic viscosity. So if we substitute the value of uh, eta is 2.5451, so we could get the x here is equal to 41 centimeters. So and then how to determine whether it is uh, lamina or not? So we calculate uh, using the Reynolds number. So we have, uh, I'm sorry, this is not D. So the equation is rho, v, and l over mu. In some textbook, they will write is rho, v, and x over mu. So, and then we substitute the x here with 45 centimeters. So it is 0 0.045 uh, for one uh, meter. Okay, so we substitute the value of x and then you substitute the value of v here is actually 20 meter per second. So you have we have the rho for air and the mu for air and then finally we get it is 5.45 by the times 10 by the power of 5. So here, uh, this is the, the common assumption that uh, you need to understand. If we uh, solve a flat plate like this one, so and then uh, first the lamina boundary layer occur and then it will have a transition transition means uh, it has percentage of uh, turbulent because it's the the flow is uh, growing uh, into a turbulent flow so it's not a uh, change to turbulent flow uh, in split second so they start to have uh, uh, unpredictable uh, movement along the plate and then finally, after certain uh, location, so it will change into 100% turbulent. So this region is actually the uh, transition area. So uh, uh, I think you heard about this uh, previously. So and then uh, we are now studying at uh, the lamina version here, the lamina here. Okay, for flat plate, the normal uh, transition is actually uh, Reynolds numbers is uh, greater than 10 by the power of 6. In certain textbooks, they will say that when a Reynolds number is greater than 10 by the power of 6, the flow is totally or 100% turbulent. We call it as a, fuller, a, a fully turbulent flow. But in certain, uh, in some textbooks, they will give you limit of 5 times 10 by the power of 5. So, and then if 
this condition is actually not a fixed one because it depends on uh, a few factors. So the most influent factors is actually the surface roughness of this one. So means that if your uh, flat plate here is very rough, so the transition means uh, the changes between lamina and tibulin will occur uh, instantly. So if it uh, smooth, so means that it might be, maybe you could drag the, the transition of uh, turbulence. Okay, so uh, we could say that if the, in general, it is five times 10 by the power of part, uh, five, but uh, if it's a little bit rough on the surface, might be it, the transition, it is between two or three times 10 by the power of five. So this is the common uh, assumption uh, for boundary layers. So uh, after this, in chapter five, we will focus on the transition or we call it as instability, means uh, the, the flow here is, at the beginning here, it's quite stable, means if you put something here, so they will flow on uh, through this uh, obstacle, but the, the flow is still lamina. But if you put it here, so you will find that it could uh, uh, change into the turbulence before it's a uh, normal uh, condition. So it means it is because the flow here is not stable. Actually, you give certain uh, influence, so it would it could change into uh, turbulence. So later on in chapter five and chapter six, we will learn about this one. So uh, in chapter four, we are focusing about the calculation of lamina boundary layer. So I hope you could read a little bit about the boundary layer. So because this is a very common uh, idea about boundary layers, but the uh, estimation of uh, transition uh, value here might be uh, different from a uh, textbook to another. Okay, that is for the uh, idea for question uh, 4.4, and then uh, we go for 4.11. So, uh, for example, we have uh, a thin equilateral triangle. Plate is immersed parallel to a 12 meter per second. So this is this will be the uh, free stream velocity of air at 20 degrees Celsius and 1 atm, uh, as shown in the figure below. Assuming it is a lamina flow, and estimate the drag of this plate in Newton. So uh, this uh, come back to uh, one of the usage of boundary layer is to give a drag force and lift force. So and then, uh, but in this problem, okay, we will give uh, a triangle triangular plate. Okay, the triangular plate, the problem is the different, the, the length of the boundary layer is different. So means that we have two uh, variable, the, the length and also the, the shape is different. Previously, we are discussing on plate plate. So we have the free spin velocity like this one. And then uh, the, the boundary layer will occur on this plate. So in this situation, in certain value of x, for example, so this is an x axis. So we have, uh, let's say, x1 here. So at point x1 here, okay, so at this point, okay, at all point along this uh, blue area, okay, will give us a same, a constant local shear stress and uh, we could just uh, multiply with it area to get the value of force. Okay, that's uh, the, the basic idea. But for the triangular area like this one, okay, we found that, okay, the value of, okay, here for the, for the plate plate here, the value of this point and value of this point is different because the Renault number is different because the value, the length of X here is different. So means uh, the variable for, for this situation, for the thin uh, plate, plate situation is the value of x. However, here in this situation, we have problem. If we have uh, a, two, uh, plate, a two area like this one, for example. So, and then uh, we found that here the boundary layer occur in short distance because the, the the area here is short. 
but in this area because the the stripe is long so the boundary area will uh, occur until this length so in this uh, one so it just until this length so the, the difference of x here will give us problems okay so here so uh for one short area here okay so because the the area is in rectangular so means all the area is actually will represent the same uh, boundary layer situation so the calculation is a little bit easier okay so and then how to solve this problem is first we need to uh, create an equation to uh, substitute the effect of length so the, the effect of l here so uh, let's say we have a 60 degree triangular shape here so because uh, the, the length here is two meters so we could have uh, if we divide into this one uh, this symmetrical axis here so so the length here is one meter and we assume this is the y axis and uh, the horizontal length here the maximum one is 1.73 meters and we assume this is the axis of l so and then because uh assuming laminar flow so to shortcut this uh calculation we we could use the uh, equation from the Blasius uh, equation. So from the Blasius, we could calculate as this one. Previously, we uh, uh, we derive uh, CD, the value of drag coefficient from Blasius table. So we get it is equal to 1.328 over square root uh, Reynolds number. So we have this one. And then uh, if we substitute with the uh, uh, this equation because the Reynolds number here can be re, uh, substitute with rho u l over mu and then we comes uh, we take out the value of l because we are now try to uh, manipulate or we try to substitute uh, the value of l here with another uh, equation because l here is different from one point to one point okay i hope you could uh, understand this one so and then uh, Another equation to calculate or uh, relation of drag force and the CD is drag force is equal to CD times 1 over 2 rho AU square. So this is the uh, experimental. Based on the experimental, we could find that uh, the relationship between drag force and CD can be written as this one. So and then uh, we start to calculate the drag force for a small horizontal area so that uh, small horizontal area is this one so this is uh, the stripe uh, for one small area for this uh, triangular area so we could calculate it as this one so we have uh, it start from the f d equal one over two c, uh, c d one over two rho a u square so the 1 over 2 is constant, rho is also constant, u is also constant. We have problem with a because a is going to change. So and then uh, because we are calculating the, the small drag force uh, according to a small area, so we write something like this one. So we have uh, dfd, cd, 1 over 2, rho, u square, and da. And then da here is replaced with l times dy because uh, according to this diagram, so the A here, so mean the, the small area, the stripe here is L times dy. So the, the thickness of this one is dy. So, and then uh, we substitute with uh, L over dy. So, and then we change uh, the, we substitute the value of uh, CD here. So we substitute the value of uh, CD here with uh, this one. And again, uh, I hope you could understand why we bring the value of L here comes out because we have another L here. So mean we need to extend, expand the, the equation of Reynolds number. And then we could write is as this one. But another problem is we have the value of L here, but we need to integrate it 
because we have df and dy. So for sure, you know how to solve this one. And we will integrate both sides. But the problem is we don't have any term in y, but we need to integrate in y. So this means uh, if we keep continue, means uh, we just uh, add y, mean uh, by integration with uh, some uh, something that uh, doesn't have uh, terms of y. So we will we'll have one y. So if we do that, so means it's something wrong actually because the L here is actually closely related to the value of Y. So means if the Y increase, so the, the value of L is also increased. So means that we need to make a relationship between these two parameters. So what we could do is we could say that if okay, L is maximum, which is 1.73, so we could uh, write as L. And then if uh, Y is maximum one, so uh, so the value is now become one. So from here, we could write as DY is equal to one over 1.73205 DL. Okay, so and then we need to give a limit. Why? Because we are now, okay, first, if we do this, Okay, so if we integrate this term, so we need to integrate in terms of y1 and y2 because we are using the dy. So, and then what we need to do is we need to replace the dy here with dl. So we could replace by one over 1.73 dl into this term means that the limit here also need to be changed. So it can be changed. So I think uh, uh, by looking at this equation, you could write uh, 1.73205y is equal to L. So if y equal to zero, so L is equal to zero. If y equal to one, so L will equal to 1.73. So uh, we have this limit. So uh, means that, okay, we could substitute the dy here with this term and then, uh, we have dl now, and then we need to integrate with l. So, and then if we integrate uh, both sides to get the, the total value of drag force, so the limit will become zero to 1.73. So, and then if we substitute this term, okay, so we could get uh, drag force is equal to 195.44 Newtons. So, and then, uh, please uh, understand that we have a triangle here. The wind comes here. So, and then uh, the, well, let's say the, the situation is okay. So wind come like this one. So, and then the calculation that we do is actually on the top surface. So if we look at the uh, side view here, so means that the calculation that we do is actually the calculation for the boundary layer on the top surface. So because boundary layer also occur at the bottom surface here, so what we need to do is we need to multiply with two, and then we could say that the total drag force occur for that situation is 390.88 Newton. Okay, so this is the uh, idea. So if, let's say, so let's say we have just only a flat plate like this one. So, and then we have a, a pressure here, uh, we have the uh, free stream velocity here. So if, so if uh, the question give you the velocity uh, distribution, let's say, okay, velocity U over U is in a uh, second order poly polynomial. So means it is, uh, u over u to y over delta plus y over delta square. So you need to start with that velocity distribution. And then you use the CD from the second order, and then you substitute with the equation of FD equals CD, one over two rho AU square. And A here, you just calculate the area of this flat plate because this area Okay, can be used straightforward, can be substituted in this equation straightforward because the length here is not influenced by the y. So, and then uh, we, we could just uh, substitute the value of a here with the uh, area of this 
flat plate. So this is the difference between this question and the normal flat plate question. So let's say we have this one. For example, we have a, a flow straightener. So the flow straightener is actually used in a common is in wind tunnel application. So some uh, people says that the wind uh, the flow straightener means the uh, the honeycomb. So because uh, uh, for example we have the we have a uh, this is the test section of the wind tunnel. And then it will uh, connected with a fan here. Wind tunnel, uh, you will have two types of wind tunnel. One is suction type, one is blower. So normally we will have the, the wind tunnel like this one. So uh, this is the suction type. The, the wind, it will suck the air and the, the air will flow into this uh, in this direction. Okay, to make sure that the wind is uh, flow in a straight line, so we will put a honeycomb here. So this honeycomb is actually the flow straightener. So a honeycomb can be built easily. Okay, you can use just a, a, a straw, a drink, a drink straw, you just combine, compile it, uh, so many like this one. So you have a lot of straw, and then it will create a something like honeycomb. So it is okay for you not to have the, the hexagon shape of honeycomb. So it is okay for you if you conduct uh, experimental work using a uh, wind tunnel. It is very important for you to make sure that you, you have a flow straightener. If not, you will not get a straight line, means the, the lamina flow, and then your uh, value, your measurement value is might be uh, quite fluctuate. Okay, so let's say we have a, Flow straightener here consists of array of narrow ducts placed in a flow to remove swirl. Okay, swirl means turbulent and so on, and other transverse velocity. One element can be idealized as a square box with thin side as figure here. So uh, 4.13 is a figure in your textbooks. Use flat plate theory. Derive a formula for the pressure drop delta P across of n times n bundle of such boxes so means the idea is, is uh, we have boxes here so we have uh means uh just imagine uh, the flow can through from this side onto this side so and then uh because uh we assume that this uh flow is lamina so uh because we don't have any velocity distribution so we could uh, just use the uh bless use uh coefficient so we have the 1.328 over Reynolds number here so and then uh, we substitute with the idea of drag force here so and then uh, we could have this area so in this equation okay we need to play around with the idea of uh, area here so area here you cannot take the cross-sectional area because we are not dealing with flow rate okay let's say we have this one if we are dealing with fluorid okay we need to use the cross-sectional area and this velocity but now we are uh, dealing with boundary layer so boundary layer means we need to have area where the boundary layers occur so mean means that here we need to take this area as our area in our calculation so that's why we substitute the value of A here as AL means the width of A here multiply with A here multi uh, multiply with the L here as our area. Okay, so and this is only for one plate. So mean for this situation in one box we so we have an N uh, uh, in one box we, we will have a four surface so this is one so this is two and this is three and the top plate is the four so means the the box there you will have four surfaces need to be calculated so uh let's say we have uh, four walls and we have n square box so n square box means 
might be you you have the arrangement of four times four for example so mean uh, you have a four box here and then you have a, another four box uh, and this row so you have something like this okay so you have four times four boxes so and then uh, we need to multiple with four and then multiple with the total boxes that we have so this is the equation that we have here so and then uh, for simple calculation uh, to calculate the pressure drop across the array so we could use the idea you know that force is equal to pressure times area and then pressure here is actually the force divided by area so area here means okay so area here means that uh, we have uh, area okay this pressure okay we have Okay, let's say we have an n time n here. So, and then the pressure, okay, in this situation, area here is actually the cross-sectional area because the nature for us to calculate the force equal pressure times A here. So, A is actually where the pressure acts. So, for example, we have a, a surface here. We, the pressure comes uh, like in this direction and then the area need to be calculated is this area so i mean in this situation we have a flow here okay so and then it will uh react on this surface on this cross uh, cross-sectional surface to give us force okay so and then uh, we take the a here is the n a square because we have n here so and then the length of this one is actually a so, so n times a so we get the total length here and then we'll get uh, times with we, we, we the n times a again here so we have n times a square and then we could get the terms for the uh, pressure occur in this situation is this one so this is the term for the pressure for the flow straightener so here my uh, you need to understand is so according to this, uh, according to the uh, question, so it is about the flow straightener. So normally flow straightener is actually inside the uh, device like this. Okay, so you, we have a, 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 a test section actually in a wind tunnel like this one, and then we will have the flow straightener at, in front of this one. So means that uh, we are dealing with uh, airflow inside a conduit so inside a closed system so that's why uh, we uh, we could calculate this uh, equation we could uh, use this idea if you just have uh, if uh, you just have a flow straightener here in open space okay so uh, so uh, the the pressure here okay might be can be assumed as uh, an, uh, okay, you could still use the uh, the same area because uh, this flow will give you a force okay uh, because uh, you will uh, feel the force of this uh, motion okay so uh, so that is the idea of flow straightener and in the uh, uh, wind, wind tunnel Okay, next, uh, in 4.50, so we have an air about uh, 180 m and 20 degrees Celsius flows through a 12 centimeter square duct at, at, at 0.4 meter cube per second, as shown in this, in figure 4.50. 200 thin plates of 1 centimeter cord length are stretched across the duct. Okay at random position they do not interfere with each other how much additional pressure drop to these plates contribute contribute to their dark flow loss okay so here the word a stretch across the dark is actually like this so let's say we have a dark here mean uh just a okay we have a pipe with a square cross-sectional area a dark so and then this is the uh side view so if you see from here so we will have a thin plate 
stretch from wall to wall like this one. And then we have another thin plate stretch from here to here. So, so this is the, the meaning of uh, one centimeter cord length. So length here is one centimeter. Okay, uh, are stretched across the across the duct. So this is the the, the it's crossed from uh, wall to wall. So and then we have two hundred of these thin plates. Okay, so so and then uh, the the question asked to calculate the uh, pressure drop uh, in this uh, situation. So first, because it gives us 0 0.4 meter cube per second, so means uh, it gives us the flow rate. So the equation for flow rate can be written as Q is equal A times V. And then we could calculate the velocity uh, in this uh, duct by uh, Q divided by A. So we have 27.8 meter per second. So and then uh, if we want to check the uh, Renault number. So here the Renault number, we have two Renault number. So here, please uh, be careful because Renault number is actually uh, very sensitive. Very sensitive means you need to know what parameter you use to calculate Renault number and you need to understand what is the meaning of that Renault number. Okay, so for example, for uh, this uh, Renault number, so um, let's say we have, uh, we use the 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 square, the 0. Uh, 1.2 meter here, okay, or we, we just, because the, the square here is the dot here, so because it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the uh, diameter, so we calculate this one by a hydraulic diameter, okay, so the hydraulic diameter. Okay, so uh, by calculating uh, the hydraulic diameter here, so uh, we could get is around 222,000. So this is actually reflect the, 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 the Renault number here is actually reflect the uh, flow inside this dump. So because uh, it is uh, more than 2,000, so the, the flow here is turbulent. Then, Okay, so, but again, you could calculate another Renault number based on the plate. Okay, so if based on the plate, we will use rho VL over mu because our plate is like this. It's stretched from wall to wall. And then if the flow comes here, so, and then it will create boundary layer in this plate. So now we are calculating bound uh, Renault number based on this length. So if based on this uh, flat plate uh, length, so means we are actually uh, evaluating the Renault number or the, or the flow uh, nature on this flat plate. So we are calculating this one. So it is 18,500 Renault number. So means that we learned previously that the transition from lamina to turbulent, it is around 10 by the power of five. So this is not uh, until 10 by the power of five. So uh, we could say that the lamina boundary layer that occur on this flat plate is actually, uh, the boundary layer that occur on this flat plate is actually in lamina uh, nature. Okay, so uh, I hope you could understand the, the idea of, uh, the idea of Renault number because we will have uh, a few Renault numbers based on uh, what you are uh, calculating with. Okay, so and then, okay, so because the lamina boundary layer occurs on this uh, flat plate, now we could use the drag force, uh, the, the drag coefficient proposed by Blasius. So, uh, so again, uh, I, I have told about this previously. If we don't know the uh, velocity distribution, and then we could uh, confirm it that the boundary layer that occur on that uh, area is lamina, we could use uh, 
all all uh, parameters proposed by Blasius. So if turbulent, so we will have the representative value for turbulent boundary layer. Uh, we will learn uh, in uh, chapter six later. Okay, so uh, from Blasius, so we have CD is equal 1.328 over Renault number, and then we divide into each Renault number because the flat plate here is fixed, the size is fixed, so means that the Renault number is fixed here. So, and then we could, we could get the CD is 0 0.00976. So, and then if we calculate the drag force for one plate, so we just use this equation, okay, because the flat plate here, is uh, in rectangular so we just substitute the value of a here so a is actually one centimeter here means 0 0.01 and the length here is actually equal to the length of the dark 0 0.0 uh, 0 0.12 so and then we could get uh, this one so this is for one plate and you need to remember that uh, we have two sides one the, the, the top plate, the top surface and the, the bottom surface. So mean you need to multiply with two. And then you will get drag force for one plate is equal to 0 0.0109 Newton. And if we have 200 plates, okay, we will have 2.18 Newton. So, and then uh, to get the force again, we are dividing the force with the area. But again, the area here, actually the area of the duct. So the area of the dark is actually the cross-sectional area of, of the dark. So it means you need to calculate 0 0.12 times 0 0.12 meters. So you will have that the pressure, uh, the delta P is equal to 151.4 Pascal.